Okay, recording started. So, hi everyone. Ah, yeah, after that technical palaver. <laughs> uh, I love tech, but at the same time, it annoys the crap out of me. Anyway, crystals. Yes, crystals. So, uh, I'm guessing most of you here um, get what crystals are all about. Um, I suppose my first real contact with crystals, um, I was about 21, 20, 21, something like that. And uh, it did make me laugh. Someone bought me a healing session. I'm like, what are you saying? Because, <laughs> uh, you know, back then, being a young whippersnapper, I was defensive about everything. Uh, so, yeah, someone bought me a healing session. And I'm like, I, uh, I put it off and put it off. <laughs> And uh, it was and and she seems to have muted herself, so I'm just gonna jump in here. Um the recording's still going and uh whilst Angie figures out how to unmute a mic <laughs> we'll wait for her to come back on. <clears throat> There, there are strange things that are happening Angie's abroad. Oh, that's <laughs> ah, there we very go. weird. Very <laughs> weird. Right, I'll re-mute myself. That. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's very strange. Um, yeah, so, yeah, my, my first uh, experience with any kind of crystals was in this healing session. And this lovely, lovely lady um and i did actually go back for because she used to do readings as well so i did go back for reading but i never went back for healing because the whole experience just made me feel really uncomfortable um which is really funny because you know the bit the, the switcheroo is now we do healing and when we see people like stiff as a board and not able to move that was me <laughs> lying on that table and she was being I didn't know what they were. She was putting things on me, and I'm like, "What is that? What is that?" And she says, "It's a crystal." And I'm like, "Well, I, I don't really want that on me." <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! When I when I think about that, it's completely bonkers. Yeah, considering now that every flat surface in this flat has crystals on it. <laughs> um, so you know, I didn't I didn't know anything about crystals. I didn't know what she was doing. I knew it was healing, but I had no idea really. Um, but that was my first introduction, and I suppose it was in at the deep end, really. Um, because what I do remember is these were very large crystals that she was using. Um and I was one of those people, uh, because I had a friend at the time who was into I think she actually ended up training as a healer. But she, she was into crystals and healing and all that stuff. And she introduced introduced me to Louise L. Hay, Hay's book, You Can Heal Your Life, which I, you know, probably, you know, gave back to her as I don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> and then later on down the road, I bought a copy, you know, like you do. Um, but I was, you know, if she ever pulled me into one of these shops, I'd be there almost like, arms folded tapping my foot come on when are we going <laughs> when are we going to the pub kind of thing you know um so you know i always felt very uncomfortable going into any kind of place where there was i suppose there was any kind of light if there was light there i didn't want to be there <laughs> um so yeah my whole idea of crystals and any kind of healing was was not a, my perspective on it my whole take on it was was very skewed uh, and what's interesting <laughs> is when i trained to be a soul realignment practitioner uh what i found out was i'm a natural healer so you know back then crystals were not on my radar at all it's like I don't need any of that, you know. I've, I've got, I've got drugs and alcohol. <laughs> Why would I need crystals? Um, so, 
although saying that i did actually collect lots of free crystals off the beach <laughs> so i was into crystals really it was just yeah I, I suppose i did it my way for a, quite a few years uh, i used to spend um whenever i went to brighton because that's the pebbliest beach that i used to go to i, I was always collecting crystals shells and there's actually one, one little story i think i think we've been out clubbing as you do and in the morning you know with a hangover we're sitting on the beach and i'm moaning <laughs> about the state of my love life as you do and i whacked my hand down on the beach and when i looked there was this heart shaped stone <laughs> a crystal essentially uh because it i think it was granite or something like that it, that you know was in my hand and i think oh, i've still got it now um so i did actually collect crystals it just wasn't in the way that uh i do now although i still collect crystals off the beach <laughs> so i guess fast forward 10 little over 10 years and I, in that time i kind of dabbled in um wicker gerald, i had gerald gardner's book the solitary witch and what's interesting is when i moved up this way because i lived in horsham for most of my life and i moved up here to dartford which is a whole nother story about getting into drama school um there was actually there was actually a shop in dartford back then there isn't anymore um that was run by witches and it was full of crystals and tarot cards and you name it they had it in this shop so I had a friend who said to me, "Yeah, we we need to go in there." I'm like, oh, "I don't know about that," <laughs> uh, but I did. I, I went in, and I didn't. I, I don't know if I found it overwhelming. I think what I found most intriguing was the woman that was behind the till just kept watching me, <laughs> not in a "Are you going to nick anything?" kind of way, but in a um, and. I don't know we did eventually get talking to her so you, you, once, once i've been in there once i got one crystal which when i picked it up buzzed in my hand and i'm like oh what's that and uh, it was a piece of rose quartz it was a tumbled stone this little one but it did it buzzed in my hand and i wouldn't say it freaked me out but uh i didn't know what that meant <laughs> Uh, my friend said no that needs to go home with you and i'm like okay um but this, this lady that was in the shop we, we got talking to her and you know every time we'd go in we'd have a lovely chat about crystals and tarot and spirits and all kinds of things um but yeah this one little piece of rose quartz was the first it was the first crystal i ever bought and uh I suppose <laughs> I, I, it although it kind of I didn't know what it was when it was doing that buzzing in my hand is I was trying to be really cool about it but <laughs> because I didn't know what it was it must have looked really strange actually <laughs> um so yeah that that was that was the first crystal I ever bought it certainly wasn't the last <laughs> um because at the time um i'd become a single parent uh it wasn't i had a son who was autistic so and in fact his journey with crystals um uh, was an interesting one he wasn't really that interested until he got to about i says 10 or 11. but i secretly gridded his room with crystals that would kind of try and keep him calm <laughs> um and I was definitely on a path of self-discovery back then as well, through yoga and meditation and then crystals. <laughs> um, so this this little piece, this tiny little piece of rose quartz that buzzed in my hand was, was the beginning of my healing journey, really. So what I what I realized, what I found out later on through the soul realignment work 
that I trained, uh, when did I do that? I think that was 2017, I trained in that. And what I found out was um, this piece, this tiny little piece of rose quartz and other crystals that had joined the collection by that time <laughs> uh, had actually helped to heal a, a tear in my heart chakra. So it was actually leaking energy. And there, there were other things as well that explained completely why I was so resistant to healing, um, especially being a healer. But yeah, this 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 little piece of rose quartz was the start of that that healing of my heart chakra. So when I, when I look back at that now, it's I mean crystals just they amaze me what they how they can help and you know it, it can be a tiny little piece. It doesn't have to be a massive great big crystal, but it's, it's the thing, I think the thing with crystals that makes them so easy to use is I had this little piece of rose quartz by my bed. So if I felt, you know, I needed it, it was there. And I think that's the thing about crystals. They, you know, you can, obviously you can wear them. Um, but they're, they're easy to pick up and just grab when you, when you need it. And I think that that's one of the things I love about them. Um, but along my, this journey, this path that we're all on, you know, when nothing else would work or nothing else was available, you know, that, that's where I would kind of, I call them my crystal friends, <laughs> which might sound a bit odd or weird or sad, I don't know. But it, it was, the, they're always there, you know, so... Yeah, that, that healing of my heart chakra was quite amazing for me. That, that I found out, um, blimey, uh, that would have been about 12 years later. I found out that, you know, that, that had been healed mainly through the use of crystals because you know, one of the things that I realized is, like a lot of us, I'd close that part of myself down through, you know, different aspects of, you know, how I'd grown up. So it was it was quite amazing that these, <laughs> these little rocks <laughs> had facilitated that healing. Obviously, you know, the yoga and the meditation as well, but because I would deliberately go out of my way to find crystals that you know healed the heart chakra, I, it's, it's just amazing what they do. It really is. Um, so I've used them obviously to heal my heart chakra wonkiness. <laughs> uh, I've used them because I have no grounding in any of my charts, astrological or star realignment. I have no grounding whatsoever. Um, so I used a big piece of carnelian for years to help ground myself, you know, whether that was anxiety or uh, self-doubt or self-sabotage or that, you know, that lovely thing that we tend to do where we beat ourselves up with a great big club over the head for not doing something perfectly right. <laughs> so that I mean, I've still got that piece of carnelian as well that that's been with me blimey since about 2014 so 10 years that piece of carnelian has been with me um so and I and you know obviously I still use them now um whether that's for uh, meditation uh so the type of stones I use for meditation, there's a few actually. Um, I have a, it's only a small quartz scepter, which is amazing. And I usually match that with a, it's got many facets, this one. It's a phantom elistial chlorite quartz point. <laughs> and it's amazing for any kind of meditation, path working any kind of journeying, anything like that. 
Um, or I use the other two. Uh, there's two others I use together, which is numite and demortierite, which are also really good for uh, meditation. They work slightly differently, but yeah, I usually go with what you know what my intuition says to you. So that's quite amazing. Um, I use them also for offerings for deity. Uh, which is <laughs> quite an interesting thing to do. Uh, so I'll, I'll go out and buy a crystal, come home with it, you know, cleanse it and set it for purpose. And then I'll hear in my ear, that's mine. And it'll be, it's usually Sekhmet who says that. <laughs> that's mine. I want that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just make me laugh. Um, so, yeah, off offerings um to deity is also it's a really nice um way to make offerings i i think so yeah i, I suppose starting with very small tumble stones like i did slowly collecting them and i had this <laughs> it was an old ikea shelf unit a very narrow shelf unit with tiny little shelves on it so I had all my crystals on one shelf. <laughs> Anyone who knows me now go, no, you're joking, Ed. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, that small shelf has now become any flat surface anywhere in this flat. <laughs> um, which I think, you know, when I think of, you know, the journey that I've taken with these crystals is... It's been one actually of expansion and growth without question. Um, so not just the amount of crystals, the, the size of them, and then, you know, how that has opened up doors to other experiences, definitely. Uh, I've even had crystals shout at me. <laughs> So we were in a, a charity shop, uh, this was years ago now, and Ian picked up these two vases and they were made of crystal. Uh, so one of them was like a grey agate. So I knew what that was, that wasn't the problem. This other one, I'm like, I didn't recognise it. And all of a sudden I hear it very loudly in my ear, bloodstone. I'm like, Ian, this is bloodstone. And he's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, it just told me. It shouted in my ear, actually. So, you know, don't be surprised if your crystals, actually, you can hear them. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, I think it's quite, it's quite amazing when they talk to you like that. Uh, of course, the other way they, they communicate. So if you hold, I found this out when I was doing a daily mantra. It's one of the yoga sutras that I'd repeat. Um, for, uh, I think I was, if I remember rightly, I was using a mala. So it'd be 108 repetitions. And I'd hold a crystal. I think it was just a quartz crystal in my hand. And when I'd finished the chant, it's like my, my hand would feel wet. So I'd pick up the crystal and there would be little tiny beads of water on my hand and on the bottom of the crystal that had been in contact with my skin. So they, they have amazing ways of communicating with us, whether it's that kind of energetic uh, transfer of their energy through water, because obviously water is a conductor. Um, or whether it's shouting in your ear. <laughs> they are, yeah, I suppose for me. Um, I suppose it's what, it's what led me to, we had a little while of being crystal sellers. Because what we realised, one, one of the things about um, crystal shops generally, um, they do put a big hefty, uh what do they call that um uh markup on crystals 
So we thought, okay, so we'll become crystal sellers. And we're, what we'll do is we'll, we won't mark it up as much as these big shops because uh, Glastonbury is crazy for that. <laughs> so you have the little shops, which are quite reasonable. And then you have what I call the, the spiritual blue water shops, <laughs> which are extortionate, you know, just because they have a posh shop. You know, it's just, I don't know. <clears throat> you used to get my goat. So that's why we set ourselves up as crystal sellers. Um, so that we could, you know, we could offer people what they wanted, but, you know, at a reasonable price, not these hyper inflated extortionate prices. But, um, yeah. So I think I think part of my journey has been also allowing myself. So anything around yeah, allowing yourself to enjoy something is it's a big well again, we're we're not really encouraged to do that as as children. Um but I, so I think part of that journey has definitely been allowing myself to, you know, buy crystals. And I suppose in, enjoying the process of letting the crystal choose you, because that's the other thing that happens. <laughs> so if you put your hand in a, in, a, in a bowl of crystals, there will be one that, or maybe two or three, that, you know, you, you are definitely drawn to. So, you know, in the past, I've had people say to me, oh, you know, what, what crystal, you know, can I use for blah, blah? And, you know, do you think this crystal will work? And I, I always say, you know, if you go into a crystal shop, you know, go with what you are drawn to because that's the only way, really, um, to um what's the word i'm looking for it's a free it's that frequency again everything comes down to frequency so the frequency of the crystal will be um in sync i suppose with your frequency at that moment in time and that that changes so i can remember uh buying uh there's a book by oh, robert simmons i think i think it's robert simmons and it's uh crystals for the something like crystals of the new earth or something like that um and we went on a mission to get as many of these crystals as we could um but what i would find back then was that if I held those crystals they'd give me a headache so what I realized is I wasn't quite ready <laughs> for those crystals yet back then um, so as your as your frequency changes so your ability to be able to use these uh, higher dimensional crystals will increase as well um which is is you know it's an interesting benchmark actually i think um the thing about names as well is an interesting uh so it's is you know remembering names of crystals is i don't know i suppose it's a it's just remembering something isn't it but I think the real the real skill with crystals is to put all that aside without question. Because, yes, some crystals are better for some things than other crystals, for sure. Um, but if you can just put one in your hand and you can actually... Um, what's the word? Like connect with it in a very... Uh, open way then it will give you whatever it is that you need without question 
because it, it took me a very long time to get my first crystal book i think it was probably about five years from the first crystal i ever bought to get in my first crystal book so i just had to work with you know what does it feel like because <laughs> um, even if you're you know you're trying to find information online you know what 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 does it what is this crystal called what does it what is it good for you know the crystal that you've got in your hand doesn't always look like the pictures that are on on the internet so it's it's very much about being able to hold it in your hand and just let it speak to you um and there have been times as well <laughs> i can't believe i've done this where i'd have a very small crystal collection and i would just gift them all away um and then I'd end up with no crystals and then have to go out and get more <laughs> which is never a bad thing um the other amazing thing about crystals so they, they can be used in so many different ways they are i suppose that's that's another reason why i love them because you can wear them you can just sit with them you know if you've got quite a large crystal you can just sit with it if you like um but we've used crystals to grid different areas um so we we've gridded so for example where we do most of our sound healing uh we've gridded with blue lace agate in four corners because blue lace agate is amazing for sound and vibration frequency um we also as another layer in the same room we have three we have three great big pieces of selenite which it's really interesting actually try this as an experiment get some selenite and just put it in just in one room and see the difference when you walk in that room give it a little bit of time to settle and what also will happen is people will come in and they'll say things like oh do you know what i feel really relaxed or they'll say well, you know, I'm usually very stressed, but I feel uh, feel like I want to go to sleep. <laughs> um, we even had we had an engineer come in here one time, uh, Virgin Media engineer to fit the new router, yeah. And he came in and he he was pottering away in the corner, and all of a sudden he said, he said, you know, he said, I don't usually I feel, usually feel quite on edge when I'm in people's houses, but I feel so relaxed in here. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's what selenite does. It is amazing. Um, other things that you can grid. So you can grid a room. You can grid around a bed. Uh, you can grid your whole house. Um, but what you can also do is you can bury them in your garden. This is another really interesting story so years ago we had these buddha statues in our garden and one year we were off on our camping trip and our neighbor rang me on our mobile phone and said and someone's just stolen one of your buddhas out of the garden i'm like what in fact he's stolen two or three of them out of the garden which is very bizarre uh he was the local drug dealer but you know i don't i don't have no idea why he was still buddhas out of someone's garden it's very weird so anyway the long and the short of it was he ended up um it, it, this wasn't the first thing he'd stolen but so the police were gathering information on this person and um <laughs> when they'd gone to arrest him so we'd after that incident had happened we gridded a pentacle on our on our it's not our land but you know what i mean um from the front to the back garden made a pentacle with uh sardonyx and fire agate so if you know your crystals you know how powerful that is so there's one night we're sitting here and it's very quiet and then all of a sudden there's a big ruckus outside the uh right outside our front window and uh, it was the police chasing this guy the buddha thief we called him yeah and they tackled him to the ground right at the point of the pentacle that we gridded. <laughs> it 
and he he ended up in prison for other things as well but that was you know the the, the theft of the buddhas was part of that um <laughs> but it was just so funny that they tackled him right at the point of the pentacle that we'd gridded <laughs> so they're very powerful they are very very powerful because they come they come out of the earth and something like fire agate has the energy of volcano in it because if you look at a piece of fire agate what it is it's bits of um lava that have cooled uh reasonably quickly so it forms like these little uh luminescent bubbles it's <laughs> it's amazing and it's very powerful um it's a really good stone actually if um you want to send energy back to where it came from with a little note attached to it <laughs> which is why i love fire okay um so i so see it crystals have definitely become an intrinsic part of my magical work um it would definitely it would look very different if i didn't use crystals because they they're you know they're beautiful tools to work with um at the moment i am i've actually got it right here i've got this uh so the last crystal that i bought was it's a piece of iolite with sunstone in it and if i took a picture of it and put it up in the group you wouldn't see that it's got like so iolite is it's not see-through but you can see through it if that makes sense um but this iolite has got these goldy bronzy colored flecks in it which is the sunstone and i got that uh, as part of my magical work uh, and i'm gonna create a or something to hold it so i can wear it but um it's I don't, I don't know what my magic world would look like without crystals actually because we've been you know there have been times when we've been guided by spirit and by deity to buy certain crystals which have then that's the synchromistic journey the, the unfolding path and some of these crystals have literally unlocked parts of the journey um an example of that i'm just looking around because i've got my altar set up for later um uh just looking around so i suppose one of the things so when we were buying these high frequency crystals uh crystals of the new consciousness is that book by robert simmons um so what we were doing back in 2012 we were teaching yoga and meditation and when we got on this we were buying these very high frequency crystals what we were doing <clears throat> what it unlocked for us was um it was a series of workshops that we developed that were um all around ascension and what we would do is we would grid the whole we, was, we were in a, this lovely really nice church hall that had wooden floors wooden ceilings it was gorgeous and we would grid the whole of the space with these crystals just to um, amplify the energy of what we were doing so it unlocked and i mean i know for a fact that some of the people that were there for those workshops um broke through a lot of personal barriers to go and do the things that they actually wanted to do rather than you know the things that they were they thought they had to do if that makes sense um so you know that's just one example of how crystals can you know unlock things for you i think it's it's just amazing um and the other really interesting thing about crystals so 
during that time in 2012 and and you know like after that there were crystals discovered that hadn't hadn't been there before if that makes sense so i i find that fascinating so as the earth is because there is a theory that the earth actually ascended in 2012 and we're just kind of in the wake of that um but that that makes sense to me because so there were a lot of things that changed in 2012 but not everyone was there if that makes sense so yeah that there were there there were all these crystals that were being discovered that that weren't around before which is um and when did we get that book crystals of the new consciousness i think that was 2014 so in those two years between 2012 and 2014 there were new crystals that had been discovered and obviously there were more after that as well um so i just think that's fascinating the earth is literally giving us these high frequency tools that we can then use to help with this amazing journey that we're on right now um so the, i mean the other thing we've done on this crystal journey is aside from you know sourcing crystals for people um that maybe they can't find elsewhere or they want a better price because you know i think what what <laughs> it's always that you know the opportunist around you know 2020 and beyond you know crystal prices went through the roof and you know whether that was well engineered maybe but what it meant was that you were paying twice what you were paying before um which i i'm actually quite proud to say that because we had a already had a stock of crystals you know we were just keeping them at that price we weren't ramping it up like some of them were <laughs> um, i get a bit of a bee in my body about, <laughs> about uh the uh the uh what would you call it the um mm, opportunistic <laughs> leanings of i don't know i just don't like that um but you know we've we've helped people to you know be able to connect with crystals um whether that's um when we were holding so we were doing new moon and full moon gatherings at one point which included sound healing and crystals it's where i did my first crystal readings without even knowing you know without even meaning to do crystal readings i was doing crystal readings so i would introduce people to like a big bowl of crystals and they would choose and then i'd get them to kind of feel the energy um without telling me what they were feeling and then i would give them a reading um just from the crystal that they'd picked up um but what that did is it introduced them to crystals in a very um in a a supported way if that makes sense um and i suppose when i was when i was running a facebook group which uh, that ended in 2019 because of Facebook shenanigans. Um, but I was I was doing regular readings for people using crystals, and they are such an amazing way to to do that work. I love tarot, I love cards, I love pendulums, I love any kind of divination. But crystal readings, they are something else. And again, um, you know that 
all that is i say all that is but all it, it really is is being open to the energy of that crystal and what it's gonna the, the information it's going to give you uh, and that could be it could shout in your ear it could be <laughs> it could be a visual thing that it shows you uh, especially crystals that lend themselves that way uh, i've got an amazing piece of which one's that that's the um it's called lunar quartz and this this crystal uh, when i when i got it and i cleansed it and i held it in my hand it just took me off on a journey straight away <laughs> amazing <laughs> i couldn't believe it uh, and I was flying. I was actually flying and uh, trying to miss trees as I'm going through this woodland flying with this crystal. It's amazing. Um, so I, I would definitely encourage, you know, if you have crystals at home to, you know, whether you do a reading for yourself or someone else, get them to choose three or four crystals and then give them, give them a little reading. It's, it's an amazing way to do divination. I love it. And of course, the other way to use crystals for divination is a piece of black obsidian, polished black obsidian. Phenomenal. Um, works like a, a magic mirror, which is amazing. Um, so I think crystals have definitely played a major major part in my healing journey and you know when I when I found out uh, through my soul realignment that I am actually a healer um, it's like uh, I was a bit disappointed actually I'm like could not have been something more interesting <laughs> but in fact <laughs> um, that's been the most amazing journey um, and the crystals have kind of been there kind of uh, sometimes holding me up <laughs> sometimes just being there by the side um, so yeah they, they've been an amazing part of my journey um, one of the last apart from the piece of eyelight sunstone uh, one of the last pieces that I bought for Ian's birthday because um, neither of us um, we we love places like Machu Picchu, but there's no way I'm going up the side of that mountain. No fucking way. <laughs> On that little path. Uh -uh, no way. <laughs> so <laughs> we can't go to Machu Picchu. We bring a piece of Machu Picchu to us. And I got this little um, peace pipe, which is it's tight. It's a tiny little thing. But when you hold this crystal in your hand, oh, my goodness, it's like you are there on top of that mountain or if it's a mountain or a hill it's very i don't know it's very large we all know that um but it's like you're there it's amazing and i think that's that's the other thing about crystals they are like trees and if you've ever held a piece of fossilized wood oh my god that's amazing too anyway um so yeah in in the sense they're like trees in the sense of if you hold a piece of Machu Picchu stone, for example, it has a direct connection to that site. The stone, it's like we've also got a piece of um, Pratheli blue stone. Um, so that'll have a connection, not just to where it originally came from, but to Stonehenge. So they have this, it's like crystal Wi-Fi. <laughs> they have this connection to, you know, the bigger place that they came from, um, which I always find is quite fascinating. Um, so you, you can connect with, you know, whether it's um, something like Machu Picchu or Stonehenge or, I mean, quite often, <laughs> Don't tell anyone this. Quite often, if we go somewhere or if someone goes, uh, I had a friend who went to Egypt and she said, I'll bring you back a piece of the pyramid. I'm like, 
Are you sure? She's like, yeah. So she did. <laughs> she brought me back a piece of the pyramid. <laughs> so whenever we go anywhere, you know, we'll we'll surreptitiously take a little piece of that and bring it home. Because <laughs> it carries the energy of that place, uh, especially like ancient sites. Um, it's really amazing. Um, so, like, yeah. yeah. I'm just going to jump in. Um, I've got a couple of things I want to ask you. Um, we've got about yep. 10 minutes to go, so I thought I'd better quickly jump on and ask. Thank, but yep. first of all, I'd, say... I'd actually come to the end there, so I was going to throw it open. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you very much. It's been fascinating listening to you describing your journey and your path that you've taken um, with regards to crystals and everything. So I have a question, and I'm glad you mentioned trees because yep. i have a staff i have a I, I had a phase a couple of years ago where i would collect fallen branches and i yeah. would find them on the paths that i was walking on literally and i yeah. would take them home strip the bark from them let them dry out in the sun sand them down and put a little rubber end on the bottom yeah. and create create a, a, a walking stick um sure. and one of them has stuck with me I, out of all the ones that i've made i've ended up using this one more and more over the last two or three years now um, yeah and what i've been wanting to do for a while is affix some kind of crystal to the top of it yeah so that when i'm out walking even if it's just like walking the dog or going on a walk into town i want to take this walking stick which is my favorite stick now um, and I want to affix a crystal to it. Now, my question, two questions. Which crystal would you recommend for walking out in public um, to generate peace? And what would you use to affix the crystal to the wooden top of the staff without damaging the crystal? Um, so peaceful stone. I mean, I would say selenite but it's wet then it's going to dissolve so i'd probably go for quartz rose quartz um rose quartz or smoky quartz or clear quartz that that would be your personal preference i would say okay um so how you would can how you would fix it i would actually use um one of the things i use to create like pendants is macrame so what I would do, uh, you you probably need, um, so ideally it would be a tumbled piece. Um, and then what you do is you'd kind of make a little dip in the top of the, the staff yeah. and then you can make a macrame net to put around the crystal and then you would lash it, almost lash it to the, to the staff. All right, yeah. Um, it's probably probably be a little bit more involved, but that's that's the basic basic kind of way I would do that because I I I don't agree with gluing or drilling crystals. Well, I think. yeah, my my initial sort of thought process would be to get a tube of Loctite Super Glue three, but then I also then immediately <laughs> thought straight away that no, that's not probably going to be a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> when you think about crystals, they have spirits in them, and they're called Davis divas davis um and i i i'm not sure if you know the because they you get crystals that have been irradiated and things and i think it just kills the 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 spirits in the crystal yeah um i don't know that's just my my thought.